Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how we can take a Cartesian equation of a curve and convert it to an equivalent polar form for the equation of a curve. And to do this, just backtrack on stuff that we should already be familiar with if you've been looking at my earlier tutorials. And that is if we have a point P with Cartesian coordinates x, y, that point can be converted to polar coordinates r theta by the connection that r equals the root of x squared plus y squared, in other words, Pythagoras' theorem. And by basic trigonometry, cosine of the angle theta equals x over r, and sine theta equals y over r. Now, we're going to be using these two equations here. If we multiply both sides by r, it follows that we get x as the subject and x would equal r cos theta. And similarly, if we multiply both sides by r here, it follows that y equals r sine theta. Now it's these two equations that we use when we want to change these Cartesian equations into polar form. And we're going to be finding that we're going to need to use a lot of trigonometric identities as well. So it's a good idea to be familiar with your trig identities. So let's demonstrate this with number one here where we've got y squared equals 8x. Now in place of y we write it as r sine theta. So therefore what we've got is r sine theta all squared okay, is equal to 8 times x and x is r cos theta. So we can write that in as 8 r cos theta. Now, if we square out the bracket, we therefore have r squared sine squared theta equals 8r cos theta. Now, each term has an r in it, so we could divide both sides by r, so that would cancel out, and r into r squared just leaves us with the r there. Now what we can do is divide both sides by sine squared theta. And that leaves us with r equaling 8 cos theta divided by sine squared theta. Now I'm going to split that sine squared theta up as sine theta multiplied by another 1 over sine theta. And I do that so that I can create the trig functions for cos theta over sine theta, which is cotangent theta or cot theta for short. So we have r equals 8 cot theta. And 1 over sine theta is cosec theta. So just write that in as cosec theta. So r equals 8 cot theta cosec theta. Okay, so that's that example. Let's just move on to the second one here. In the second one, we've got x squared equals y squared plus 2. And for this one, again, we substitute for x and y. You might even like to pause the video at this stage and give this a go. Trying to simplify your answer, okay, as much as possible. Okay, well, if you did have a go, let's see how you got on. Well, for x here, we've got r cos theta. So, therefore, we've got r cos theta all squared. Okay, equals y squared. So, that's going to be r sine theta all squared. And then we add the 2. Now, let us expand the brackets, so therefore we've got r squared cos squared theta equals r squared sine squared theta plus the 2. Now I'm going to subtract the sine r squared sine squared theta term from both sides. And if I do that, you end up with therefore 
R squared, and I'm also going to pull out R squared as a common factor. So you'll have R squared multiplied by cos squared theta. Then we're going to have minus R squared sine theta, but if R squared is pulled out the front here, it's just going to be minus sine squared theta, and that's going to equal the 2. Now cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is an identity you should be familiar with. It's the same as cosine of 2 theta. So we can simplify this to r squared cos 2 theta equals the 2 here. Now I just divide both sides by cos 2 theta and I get r squared equals 2 divided by cos 2 theta and I can get rid of the fraction because this is 2 times 1 over cos 2 theta and 1 over cos 2 theta is the same as sec 2 theta so what we've got here is that therefore r squared equals 2 sec 2 theta Okay, well that's two done. Now we'll move on to number three here. Now for three, we've got y plus root three x equals six. And again, you might like to have a go at trying this one. So I'll just give you a moment to pause the video and uh, when you come back, we'll run through the work solution. Okay, let's see how you got on if you had a go. So Again, in place of the y here, we're just going to write r sine theta. So therefore, we've got r sine theta plus, and now we've got root 3 times x. So that's going to be root 3 multiplied by r cos theta. And this is going to equal the 6. Now, I'm going to pull out r as a common factor, so therefore, we've got r multiplied by sine theta plus root 3 cos theta and that equals 6. Now I suppose you could leave it like that, it's in polar form, but we could actually go one step further. If we were to divide throughout by 2 then we've got r and we'll take this term here. If I divide by 2, that's going to be a half sine theta, okay, for that term. For this term, it'll be plus root 3 over 2, and then we've got the cos theta. And that's going to equal 6 divided by 2. So I've divided each side by 2. Why did I do that? Well, the point is that for a half, this is the same as the cosine of 60 degrees, or in radians, pi upon 3 radians. So I'm going to write this as the r, and I'm going to put the sine theta first. We've got sine theta there, and then for a half, this is the same as the cosine of 60 degrees, or in radians, pi upon 3 radians. And similarly, root 3 over 2 is the sine of 60 degrees, or the sine of pi upon 3 radians. So I'm going to write that second term as the cos theta first, and then the sine of pi upon 3 radians. And this equals 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Now, I did that purely because it creates this familiar pattern structure. You should be familiar with this. The sine of an angle times the cosine of another angle. You often see this as the sine of A cos B plus, and now we've got cos A sine B. And that identity is the sine of a plus b. So what we've got here is essentially r multiplied by the sine of theta plus pi upon 3. Okay? Comes from the sine of a plus b, where a is the theta, b is the pi upon 3. 
and this equals the 3 that we have here. So I can divide through now by the sine of theta plus pi upon 3. So we've got r equals 3 divided by all of the sine of theta plus pi upon 3. And what we've got here is that r equals 3 multiplied by 1 over the sine of theta plus pi upon 3. And 1 over a sine function is a cosec function. So what we've got here is 3 cosec of theta plus pi upon 3 radians. OK? So you can see that one of the tricks behind this, if it is a trick, is trying to simplify your answer then. It really does mean that you need to know your trigonometric identities.